Yes. But uh, <laughs> I guess in, in defence of Tohene Ray, and I've, I've got him appearing here in a couple of weeks, so I'd better say some good things about him. Um, isn't that sort of the correct sort of nature of social well, media that, that we well, don't have all mm, these sort of pre-rehearsed? No, I'm not talking about pre-rehearsed statements. Um, but, you know, but thinking but, too much before but we. But I don't um, think, engage. with respect, that any of you are interested in what I have for breakfast this morning. I don't think any of you are interested in whether I think that. Oh, you uh, might be surprised. Well, um, no, I don't think you would be. But, uh, uh, you know, but, but you might be interested. In someone what asked on, on Twitter before, have you got the best here in Parliament. Yes, well, yes. Um, <laughs> just before. Yes. Um, so well, these mundane mine. things, people are interested. I can in. assure you, it's mine, and it's 100% natural. Okay. <laughs> Even um, the colour. Okay. So you don't tweet about your your own life too much. Not really. No. Um, but that's me. But, yeah, fair enough. Uh, and yeah. I'm not, but you know, that interested in hearing the, the gems of other people's okay. lives. But so I am interested in hearing their thoughts on issues. So that you are do see it as an interactive thing yeah. rather than just yeah. a top down. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And so. You, you tweet. What about Facebook and yeah, other stuff? Yes. I mean, what's what's your usage of these things? Is it mainly Twitter? It's probably mainly Twitter, but Facebook, but both on a daily basis. So, what's the uh, difference, do you think, in terms of the political nature of Facebook and I think, Twitter? Well, in my experience, I think Twitter has much more instant impact, and I notice that quite often, if I put something on Twitter, I can expect a news media call within five, ten minutes oh, really? of it so appearing. It's so, the new press release. Exactly. So, okay. a quick comment that says. Um, yeah, all Blacks to win on Saturday, for instance. You know, inside tip. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday Straight or Sunday, they're playing actually. But uh, uh, yeah. that's the sort of thing that gets a phone uh, phone call. Whereas, you know, the ponderous press statement. Yeah. You hope like hell someone bothers to read it. Okay. And then respond to it. So I think the game Facebook? is changing. So uh, Fa uh, Facebook, uh, I think. Because uh, journalists, uh, I guess, follow Twitter mainly. Yeah. 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 It's, and it's I think Facebook, for Facebook, Facebook has been surpassed by. Um, Twitter in that respect, because yeah. I think in Facebook you, there was this capacity, then you could you could put your thoughts out there, and you still yeah. can. And you could put a you could you know do them in more detail, but actually, as you say, people have just gone quickly now to to get the headline, and if, if it's interesting, they'll come back to you. What about you, Pete? Uh, they've all got different purposes, um, and that's why I use I use Twitter, Facebook, blogs. Um, Trade me message board. They all have okay. different. They all, they're all different sorts of communities. But do you use the same have. message on the different forums, or do you, you know, uh, tailor what you're saying? You, you tailor it to a particular, to a particular forum. What you'd say on Twitter would be quite different to what you'd say on the Standard or what you'd say uh, on Facebook. Facebook's more of a more of a social social thing, um, right. whereas Twitter is more the sort of the, the ongoing business end of, of things as far as politics goes. Okay. Anyway, um, but. Blogs are also important because they allow you to uh, uh, debate a lot more, do a lot more detail and debate a lot more and link more to uh, more detailed information. Yeah. So they all have their benefits, uh, not in isolation because they're all tied together and, you, and they work best when they are uh, linked and tied together. Okay, we'll better go to any audience questions or Twitter sphere, Ashley. Uh, yeah, there's a question on Twitter asking whether you support MMP or think we need to vote. I'll vote something. to retain the MMP. Yeah. Uh, and if we were to make a change, and I'll explain my reason why in a minute, I'd vote for either preferential or STV. The one defect I see in the MMP system is the, the list component. I think that my voters have got a right to vote for me, but they have an equal right to vote against me. And I think one of the deficiencies of MMP is MPs voted out on Saturday, back large as life on Monday. I think STV or preferential voting preserves proportionality, but makes sure that everyone is directly elected. So what about this idea of uh, candidates either standing on the party list or in an electorate? Because there seems to be a slight movement towards that. Would you, you know, ever ent entertain that idea? Or? In principle, yes. I think there are practical difficulties about that, right. particularly for smaller parties where, you, yeah. where you're trying to get a candidate list together. But you, you take, and I don't want to particularise this to, to Oharu, but for instance, in Oharu, the in addition to me, the Labour, National and Green candidates are all sitting MPs. Yeah, so, exactly. So the, we actually had a situation, I think, yeah. one election ago where basically everyone that stood yeah. got in. That's right. Now, you know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm in favour of any rule against them. No, but, but I'm to just me, saying I, that, I think, that, that's, I think that's, be quite a good culture. That's an absurdity that yeah. says, hang on, you know, and forget the names. Oh. Of five people here, I voted against yeah. four of them, Look, and yet they're all still... We've got the same situation yeah. in Dunedin North, of course. Yeah. Um, we've had about four MPs in yeah. this electorate. So, so, Pete, George, what, what about you? Would you be happy to stand on one or the other if you had to make a choice, or do you think that's a bad idea? Um, I understand the problems with it, certainly. Yeah. Um, and like if I had a choice this election, I'd, uh, I'd actually stand for the electorate because that's where my heart is doing something for Dunedin. 
um, but I know that I'd have more chance of getting it on the list. I mean, uh, you might have a different opinion, but uh, most people I speak to say you've got no chance. Oh. So um, wouldn't it be better to be on the list, maybe be on the number two slot? I don't know if you've yeah, yeah. done your party list yet, <laughs> uh, Peter, but yeah. um, you know, that would give you more chance of being in Parliament, surely. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, Certainly, if, if, if my key focus was getting into Parliament, but yeah. my key focus is on doing okay. more for the need north. Okay. Um, now, sorry, I meant to ask you before, yeah. so why are you in United Future if you were doing this New Zealand, uh, your New Z NZ okay. thing? Okay, when I floated those ideas online, um, it was noticed by someone in, in United Future, uh, and what I was actually suggesting was very similar to what another candidate in particular in, in East Coast was, was looking okay. at doing up there with a more a regional representation model uh, with a, sure. a closer association with the local uh, electorate uh, and they asked me to join um, and when I had a look at uh, what Uni United Future offered uh, it was a fairly easy choice to make. Right, so before that you just went to aware of United Future, is this the I, problem with United Future that people just don't know what they're about? Um, I'd been aware of United Future, uh, I had to be honest I had thought that um, they maybe were getting fading a bit. Um, yeah. When I looked into them this year, when they asked me to, to, to consider it, uh, I realised with some of the new innovations and the new people that were getting involved, uh, that there was a lot of uh, opportunity there to actually make a real difference. Okay, that sounds good. We've only got a few minutes left, so normally we ask the participants to give some sort of election predictions about what's going to happen, maybe about some of the particular parties, uh, for example, Peters, Winston Peters, is he going to be back? No, I don't think so. I, I think he is the classic souffle that won't rise twice. <laughs> OK. Uh, OK, uh, what's going to happen with the Mana Party? They've got one MP. Will they keep that? Will they get more? I don't think they'll get more. Uh, I suspect they'll keep the one they've got, although some of the information coming from the far north suggests that might be a big ask too, that okay. Kelvin Davis is doing particularly well okay. in that seat. But I suspect Honey will probably have enough just coming out of the by-election, okay. hang on. The Murray Party? Oh, I think they'll be back. I think they've done um, a pretty good job. Numbers? The only question for me is whether they uh, hold um, Titi Tonga. Mm. Um, Surely they haven't got a chance. Well, uh, I would have thought that that was going to go Labour, but, mm. uh, you know, well, who knows? Well, On the ground, do you have any sense of what's happening in Murray and Pete? Um, in Murray in, in, in terms of Titi Tonga? Um, no, 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 no. So what's your prediction for some of these parties? Um, what, what about the Greens? Certainly, the Greens certainly solid, but uh, it's a matter of what limit they'll reach. They tend to reach a limit and, and pull and drop back a yeah. little bit from it. So, do you think? Do either of you think they can get over ten percent in this election? Will they? Uh, with, sorry, I should say, will they get over ten percent? Of course, they can. Will they? I don't think they will, and I think the reason for that is that, and which is why they are obviously so concerned at the moment about the lack of or the comparatively low enrolment levels amongst young mm. voters is that a lot of their support derives from that group. That's right. Who will give them a, an opinion yeah. poll tick but may not be in a capacity uh, to give them a vote on election day. what I wonder about is the Rena factor. Well, that, that, could, that could counter, that could yeah. balance the other Especially way. Especially in terms exactly. of these less mobilised... That, that could um, well do that. Oh, look, I, th I think the Greens will end up about where they are now. OK. So what, so seven point something percent? Well, I was going to say nine seats, whatever that, whatever that yeah, translates. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. OK. Um, Labour, are they going to plummet or w what's going to happen? Well, I think it's possible they could plummet quite substantially in the last few weeks of the mm. campaign. Very much the mirror image of what happened to National in 2002. Sure. If people are persuaded at that point that there's no prospect of them being able to form a government, then I think you could see quite a net transfer of votes out of them in two, in two directions. I think one direction will be into the Greens mm. because, well, mm. you know, there's a bit of fight there. I think, curiously enough, we could be a beneficiary there of people who say, well, look, as they did in 2002, in 2002 they said Labor's going to win the election, we'd better make sure they get a decent partner. Mm. I think this will be uh, the, the, the reverse situation. National's going to win the election, well, OK, rather than have them reliant totally on Don Brash, who can we bolster them with? Okay. So, but I think, I think um, I'd be cautious about making the prediction of a Labor plummet at this point. All the signs point that way, okay. but there's still a campaign to be So before. national, they surely have to get less than 50%. Yeah, I, I can't, they can't see them getting an outright majority, yep. um, and I don't think they do either. Okay, and finally, Ohario, um, your majority's going to reduce, isn't it? No, I think my majority will increase. Yeah? Yeah. So you'll be back in, you'll be more comfortable than last time? Uh, I'll be back in, I'll be certainly more comfortable, and I'll be very, very pleased.
Okay, any more people coming in on the list, do you think? Well, I think that goes back to what I said before. Yeah. Yes, I think, I think we're good for another two or three at least. Okay. Oh, well, thanks, uh, Peter Dunn, and thanks, Pete George. Thank you.